Hi everyone. Thanks for the uh, comments on the Archimago's Musings blog over the last little while. It's been a pleasure writing uh, about audiophile topics over the last couple of years and, and it's great getting a chance to interact with some of you over the last while. Um, over the last uh, couple of weeks, as you know, I've, I've posted a few things on HRA, this whole high resolution audio movement. Uh, obviously a lot of it is secondary to the interviews and discussions with Neil Young around Pono. And uh, I think for me personally, uh, about a year ago when he released that video with all the artists coming out of the car, I was certainly quite shocked by the kind of things that people were saying. Uh, because I think most of us recognize that if you rip a track from DVD audio or SACD and convert it to 1644, it really doesn't sound that much different. Um, I had, I've always hoped that the discussion could be shifted, not looking at these big numbers like 24 bits or 192 kilohertz, but rather at the different types, uh, the, the different sample, the different masterings, um, especially these days with the loudness wars and the severe dynamic range compression in a lot of the CD releases, to the point where, of course, LP sound better. Um, it, Every once in a while, I'll get some email. I'll get an email from uh, readers to check out something interesting. And this past week, we were treated with the release of Bob Dylan's newest album, Shadows in the Night. And as you can see, this is the HD Tracks website. Uh, it's available as a 44 kilohertz, 24-bit version for about $18. And likewise, you can go on Cool Buzz. I think that's how you pronounce it, Cool Buzz. And see that there is also the same version, 24 bits, 44 kilohertz. And on that site, it's 1539 euros, or about 13 euros if you buy the 16-bit lower resolution version. I thought it'd be interesting in this first video actually to show you what a true 24-bit track would look like if I loaded it into an audio editor. In this case, this is Adobe Audition version 3, a few years old. And um, what I did was I loaded a, a Cicada Duo track from a 2L Sampler from back in 2007. It's a 96 kilohertz 24-bit file, which is loaded into Audition as a 32-bit um, file, uh, which is how it does all the internal mathematics at, in 32 bits. What I'm going to do is try an inversion null test, basically. So I'm going to invert the file and paste it back on and demonstrate just what the difference is between 16 bits and 24 bits. So we'll take this track. Uh, actually, we'll go here, copy new to make a new copy there so that we can work on it. Now we're going to convert it to 16 bits now. In a studio, you would probably want to enable dither to decrease the quantization noise, but in this case, let's just truncate it. Okay, and we now have a 16-bit version of that original 24-bit track. You can see 16 bits here. I am now going to int this track so that basically we will flip the waveforms. I'm going to convert it back to 32 bits so that we can directly compare again to that original 24-bit audio. I am going to copy the waveform, go back to the original, and we're going to mix-paste it on top of the original from the clipboard overlap at 100%. And theoretically, if this is an exact replica, the inversion will basically null out the original signal. That is, you will not see any residual uh, noise or sound being left over. In this case, you see that clearly you've not that clearly we've nulled out the vast majority of the waveform itself. If we take a look at the frequency analysis, however, we see that there still is some really low-level signal. Um, it, across the spectrum below minus 120 dBs. But when we add up all of this together, we will get the expected minus 96 dB peak amplitude, basically because we have taken out 
all of the sound in the top 16 bits and all that we're left with is some sound below the uh, below 90 uh, below 16 bit which would be uh, below 96 dBs hence negative 96.28 and and below this is what you would expect from a normal 24 bit audio and in the next video what I'm going to show you is what it looks like when we try it with one of the tracks from the new Bob Dylan album. See you in a little bit.